Hello, my name is Randy. I'm the AutoVibe technician, and today we are going to get to learn the AutoVibe monitoring system. The first thing that's going to happen is when you turn your AutoVibe monitor on is it's going to ask you for the date and time. And you have to remember that this is in military time. That is very important. So to set that time, you can see the first block is highlighted there. So with that box highlighted, we're going to push our black knob and we are going to set our time. Seven. Move over to the next box, set our minutes. Forty-five, then we're going to come down here and set the date. It is the eleventh month today, the sixteenth. thousand and twelve. After you get all your date and time entered correctly, you have to also right click your black knob and highlight the OK box and push your enter button to accept the changes that you made and it'll show up down here at the bottom of the screen uh, the correct date and time. Now this monitor does not have a battery in it but it will store some voltage so if you uh, unplug your monitor at the end of the day and put it in your service truck or wherever, um, it'll hold that date and time in there. If it doesn't hold it the next morning when you turn it on, that is, if it needs set, that is the first thing that it'll ask you to do. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to build a configuration for the uh, paver that uh, this auto vibe system is going on. So we need to come down here, we'll push a second button down twice, and we're going to come down here to the Roman numeral 2 and 3 by turning our black knob and highlighting that. Open that up, we want to press the OK box, and then it's going to ask us to build a configuration. And to build a configuration, we need to come down to the Roman numeral 2 and 3 and the wrench. The wrench, of course, means that you're building something, so that's why it's kind of labeled that way. So we're going to open that up, and we need to open this page up by highlighting the outside of the page with that dark, darker bold line. Press our black knob, and then now we need to name it. So we're, we will name this Minic, and you can name it whatever paver or whatever machine name you want to do it, but we're going to name this one Minic. And I'm highlighting around and, and uh, highlighting the letters that we want to use. And we have Minic in there. And we want to press this enter button down here to accept that change. And we're going to come down here and this is the box where you would put in the number of controllers that you would have for your system. Uh, this particular system here we only have one controller and each controller does uh, eight, controls eight vibrators so that's why we have a number eight in here. So we're going to accept that change. We're going to come down here and we have a speed wheel on this system so we need to have uh, the can highlighted in here, which it kind of always defaults to that. Put the plus sign back up there. We have weather on this system, which is a sensor that reads the uh, ambient temperature and the relative humidity. We want to make sure that that says can and have both of these boxes check marked down here, which we do. And then in the third box down here, we have one controller and we want to make sure it says can so if we highlight that and open it up you can see we have a couple options we have none mux bus or can this is a can system so we need to make sure it says can and if we would have more uh, silver boxes for more vibrators we would go on down the line say we had a 24 vibe system we would have box two also say can and box three say can also We'll put our plus sign on that. We are done on that page. Press escape. Right click one time and highlight the arrows at the bottom of the page pointing toward the right hand side of the screen. 
open that and this will take you to the next page where you can put in the actual size of the vibrators that you have on your machine so we counter clicked our black knob two times highlighted the outside of this page open it up and if I open up this top box it gives me an option for several different sizes of vibrators that we have and it defaults to 2 and 5 eighths by 9 HV2s and that's what we have on our system our paver so we're going to leave that in there and then we'll just scroll down and make sure they all stay the same whatever size of vibrators you have on your paver which they do so we, we are okay on that page we'll escape right click your button twice and highlight the arrows to the right again go to the next page now this is a page where you want to open up and um, make this certain auto vibe system between an auto vibe 2 or auto vibe 3 if it's an auto vibe 3 system where you're controlling the speeds of the vibrators through the monitor you would put check marks in these boxes on the right hand side here and I can show you how to do that we scroll down highlight this one don't change these numbers and don't change the channel numbers so if we want to make this all divide three we need to put a check mark in there <clears throat> and then we need to go on down through and make sure they all have check marks this is an all divide two system where you're just monitoring the speeds of the vibrators you're still controlling them manually on the paver so we want to take them arrows out of there Now, put the plus sign back in. We are done on that page. Right-click your arrow twice to the arrows at the bottom of the page again. And we are done. So we are done. We're happy with our configuration. We got the OK box highlighted. We're going to press it and accept them changes. And then we need to save it back to memory. So right now, that information is in the monitor and your, your other little icons to the left of there means we're going to save it back to memory inside the monitor so we're going to highlight that and we're going to press that open that page up and then we can see where we our configuration we just built says minic so we need to transfer that to the memory so we're going to highlight this arrow in the center of the page and press our black knob and that put it back in memory, saved it back in memory. The only way to get out of this screen is you need to do a power cycle to accept all your changes. Turn it off. Turn it back on. And them changes have been saved into the memory on your auto vibe system. This is the version of software in it down at the bottom at 4.13 and we turn the monitor back on you're going to get an alarm because that's fine because we haven't learned in the controllers yet to silence the alarm we're just going to press F1 now we need to learn in the controllers for this system uh, for the vibrators to communicate to the controller back to the monitor to show us our vibrator speeds So again, we are going to push a second button down the right-hand side twice. We are going to open up the box with the question mark 0101. This is where you're learning the controllers. We'll open that up. Open that up. put the arrow in the box and the question mark starts flashing it's telling you that it's looking for one of your controllers on your on your paver so the next thing we need to do now is we need to plug in the controller with the controller plugged in and it found an internal serial number inside the controller and it's all good to go so we're going to escape out of there we have to come down and highlight our OK box to accept the changes that we just made 
and it found a controller because now you can see where all this area right here is highlighted nice and black which is a good functional part of the system that we have on this system also like if you remember when we built the configuration we have the temperature and relative humidity sensor and we have the speed wheel down here in the lower left hand corner and it found all them controllers also for that which is a good sign so we need to save this back to memory also so at the end of the day when we take this monitor off of our paver and store it for the evening and then the next morning we come back to, uh, ready to go to work all we have to do is plug it into our power and our communication lines and it'll find all the information that we stored in there for your next day of paving you don't have to relearn into the controller boxes or anything but we need to save this back to memory so it's there the next morning so we're going to open this back up again come down to the Roman numeral 2 and 3 open that up highlight your OK box open that and we need to save it from again the monitor to memory the second one down open that up and both of our boxes should stay the same because we are overriding the program or the configuration, whatever you want to call it, and saving it back to memory. And the only way to get out of this page is, is you have to do a power cycle. That's make sure you accept and save all changes that you made. We turn this back on. And all the information still should be in there and we should be ready to start paving for the day and it did it found everything we got everything nice and highlighted black now you also have the capability of logging information throughout the day as you're paving and uh, you can log uh, your vibrator speeds your date your temperature distance traveled and the speed of your ground speed wheel when paving and uh, due to, to turn that on you have your cassette icon in the lower left hand corner which has an X in it which means the logging is off to turn your logging on you're going to come straight across from the cassette here on the right hand side of the screen press the button and open it up and the top one is the icon that turns your logging on and off so if I just open that up and I have that highlighted, press my black knob, now my logging is on because the X is going at the bottom of the screen there. With the logging on, you have several ways of logging information on your monitor. You can do it by time. You can buy, do it by distance. Or you can do it by whatever occurs first, time or distance. So we have a speed wheel on this uh, current configuration, so we're going to do this one by distance. And you can also record, if you're going to do it by time, you can also open up these boxes and you can change the time to how many ever minutes you want to record. It's, it defaults to 15. You can change it to one minute up to 60 minutes if you so choose. Also with uh, recording by distance, you can change the feet. You can have it record uh, every one feet, 50 feet, 25 feet, whatever your spec requires you to do. If we do make a change in there, we need to, once we make the change, we need to sure, make sure we highlight the OK box, accept that change, and get out of that box. Um, this page here is where you can set up the alarms that you wanted to record. Um, you can just do a basic record, which will do uh, the vibrator speeds, date, time, temperature, ground speed wheel, distance. And then you have some other alarms in there too, like a centrifugal force, ground speed alarm if you get above the ground speed alarm range, and a vibrator RPM alarm also. Um, down here we have uh, uh, the capability of entering landmarks like pin markers on jobs uh, you have to enter that number in there or letters in there opening that box up let's just say I have a pin marker that's A 
and then it's uh, one, two, three, four, let's just say for example. So to get to our numbers, we're coming clear over here to the right and highlighting this arrow here. Push it once for lowercase, push it twice for numbers, and let's just say the pin marker is A, one, two, three, just for an example. So I'm gonna highlight the one, over here highlight the two, and highlight the three, that's my pin marker. I'm gonna press this enter button down here to accept that change, then highlight my OK box, and then my pin marker's in there, and it'll also record that uh, pin marker throughout the day. The next box we have is you can also record slump readings on here. Uh, the uh, inspectors on the ground when they're taking their slump readings, they can report that back to you. You can enter that here and you can also log that information if needed. We have one more icon on this page is here this is a record now button. If I have my logging on and I want to take a snapshot of what's happening with my vibrator speeds at this very second with this bottom box highlighted and logging on. If I highlight it and press the enter button, it logged information right now. And that is it for that page. We'll go up here and turn our logging back off. <clears throat> this next icon down here on the right hand side is just your alarms for your vibrators. You can set them. Um, we all, I always set them at 0 to 11,000. And you can also ignore vibrators on this page too. If you want to uh, not have a vibrator record information that's not plugged in, if you highlight this page around the outside box, press your button, and let's just say I want to ignore vibrator number three. Turn my black knob and highlight number three. Take the check mark out of it. Scroll around, hit my OK box. Number three vibrator is ignored. To put that back in, just put my check mark back in there to have that back being active again. Come around, highlight my OK box, put my check mark back in. Number three vibrator is active again. Uh, we have a couple of other features on here that you need to do is you need to calibrate your ground speed wheel. So we're going to push the second button down once and then the third button down where your track is. Open that up. Uh, your top button is just basically accumulated display to where it'll uh, accumulate time during the day. It'll also accumulate time, continuous time in your monitor and you can reset the one at the end of every day and it tells you how many feet you traveled and how many minutes you paid for that day. Come down here and open it up again. Uh, this is where you can do your ground speed alarm range. Uh, it automatically defaults to zero feet per minute and the high is 17 feet per minute. Uh, a lot of times I don't change that because uh, you're never really going to pave over 17 feet a minute. So that's that looks good. The last thing we have is, is where you can calibrate your ground speed wheel. With the ground speed wheel opened up, we need to highlight the calculator. Uh, we know we have a 500 pulse per revolution encoder. That number should ch never change and also the diameter of the wheel should never change. It's a 12 inch wheel. So with them numbers being like they are, we're going to highlight the OK box. Accept the numbers that we have in there. And then that cal automatically calibrates the wheel to 53.05 pulses per inch. It's pretty accurate. If you don't feel that it's accurate and you want to calibrate it manually, you highlight the next box on here and you go through the procedure of uh, setting up your travel distance start and uh, you can calibrate your wheel manually also. And to accept that change, we also have to highlight the OK box, accept the changes that we made and enter that. And I believe that is about all the functions that we have on our paving system. And we are ready to go to work. 
One other thing is you'll see when you have a ground speed wheel on your system, if the ground, weed, ground speed wheel is turning, it'll read out uh, feet per minute down here on your, on your screen. And you can see as the wheel's being turned, you can see the little bar graph and how many feet per minute you are traveling with your paver. It's just a good uh, reference for the operator to kind of know how fast he's traveling. So. All right, the next item we want to look at is the downloading of the logged information uh, to give to like an inspector or, or for your own personal use. And how we do that is we download it to a flash drive. And uh, so you want to use the, the card that says data log card on it. It's very important to use that one. And then uh, to, to do this, we need to take our card. It's very important to have your monitor turned off. Unscrew your USB cap on the side. Take your data log card with the monitor turned off. Insert the flash drive, turn the monitor on. Takes a few minutes here for the monitor to boot up. And with the monitor powered back up, we're going to push the second button on the right hand side down twice. And we're going to come down to the Roman numeral two and three, highlight that and open that page up. We're going to click OK on the stop sign. And your screen is going to go black for a few minutes. And that is just where the monitor and the flash drive card is, is communicating back and forth to find the card actually. And uh, don't be alarmed by the amount of time that it takes because of the size of the card and the monitor. It takes a few minutes here to find it. The screen will just be black. And now that it found the card, it'll tell you at the top of the page of, of what you want to do. The little icon on the left is an icon which stands for the monitor, and then you got your USB to your, your uh, flash drive card. So with that highlighted, black like that, we're going to open that up. And then it's, then it's asking us, do we want to transfer the logged information to the card? And yes, we do. So we want to Turn our black knob and highlight the OK box. Press our button. You'll see the black line zip across the screen. We need to, once that zips across there, we need to push it again. And then it takes us to the next page asking us to trash the information in the monitor only. So if, if we're comfortable with doing that, we will highlight the OK box again. Push our black knob. A little black line zips across there, which means it's it's done its operation. We will push it again. Now the information is gone inside the monitor. It's never to be retrieved again from the monitor, but it is on the card. Now the next step is, it's very, very important, is to turn the monitor off before we pull the flash drive out. If you pull the flash drive out before turning the monitor off, chances are the information will not be on the flash drive and you've trashed it in the monitor so the information is gone forever never to be found. 
So then we can pull the flash drive out and uh, put the little cap on it and it's ready to be put into your PC or laptop and uh, opened up. Uh, I use Excel program to read the information once I open it up. It's a little bit easier to decipher. And uh, I tell the contractors that uh, to do this every day, to download this every day onto your flash drive and trash it in your monitor, that creates you from having a, a huge file of information and it's just harder to decipher. So if you do it every day and, and download it to your PC, it's a lot easier to decipher and uh, a little less confusing. Than, and then once you download it on your PC and save it, you need to clean up your flash drive card on your PC to trash the information on there and then come back the next day and start all over again.